morning from Toronto. Thank you for joining us, everyone, and thank you for registering this for this uh, webinar. Um, I'm very pleased and very excited to be with you guys again. Uh, we've been uh, doing these webinars for quite some time, but there has been a little bit of gap this time around uh, because of our travels uh, worldwide. Uh, but today's uh, webinar is going to give you a little bit of uh, insight in what's happening in Canadian immigration, some updates, and um, we will be also answering some of your questions. So keep your questions ready, and um, as you ask them, you can show them on the screen and answer them. Today, I'm going to be assisted with my assistant, uh, Rija, from Toronto, and mm -hmm. Mr. Zohe Heather as well. I'm going to bring them in uh, to say hi very quickly, uh, just uh, the housekeeping. Um, we will be, as I said, answering questions, but we will also be uh, doing a giveaway where uh, we will be uh, giving away a free consultation to people who win today's giveaway. And uh, the procedure is very simple. All you need to do is to uh, comment with hashtag Amir Smile, and I'm going to show you the screen, how it, it looks. Uh, let me just show it to you very, very quickly so you know how to participate in today's giveaway. So you will be um, commenting with hashtag Amir Smile, uh, and you will be uh, included in today's draw that we're going to uh, conduct at the end of this uh, presentation. And uh, the consultation is actually worth uh, $250 which we usually charge uh, for a one-on-one -on -one consultation, but it will be free for you should you win today. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to be actually meeting with people in person if we are visiting your town. The next, so the next announcement will be our consultation, one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one meetings in, uh, in Dubai, Karachi, or and Islamabad. So the giveaway is hashtag AmirSmile.com. Let me bring in Rija. Uh, very quickly so she can say hi to you hello everyone thank you for joining us live today we're really excited to get started and answer all your questions yeah and we have uh Zuhair as well how are you Zuhair? i'm good sir how about you I'm good thank you very much for joining us and uh, both of you will be assisting me today with the presentation so without further ado uh, let's uh, uh, start with our presentation uh, so, um, we uh, are going to be talking about um, the agenda for today is uh, new updates in the Canadian Immigration 2024, and then we're going to touch base upon the alternative routes to PR uh, for overage applicants, those who are losing points in age factor specifically, and uh, they don't then explore um, various routes that are available, but if you dig a little deep, you'll be able to find some of the options that you might want to explore. Uh, we have the question and answer session, so I can see the comments coming in. Uh, we'll wait a little bit uh, so that more people could join. Um, but uh, as we are proceeding with the agenda, there'll be a question and answer session, and then we'll be announcing the travel dates for our Toronto team visiting your town so we can meet with you in person as well. So moving on to the major policy updates for international students. So I understand there are a lot of international students who come to Canada. And uh, the primary target uh, for most of the students is to gain permanent residency. Uh, but in the uh, recent reforms uh, the Canadian government has introduced, it has been a little bit of shock for a lot of students who are interested in studying in Canada in uh, bachelor's degree, for example, of the want to do a diploma, for them, the utility to come to Canada might have lost because uh, there are certain changes that affect them directly. The changes are not impacting master's degree holders, uh, master's degree students or PhD uh, students, but it is indeed affecting people who are pursuing bachelors or diplomas. So 
for, uh, first and foremost, um, there is a cap announced by the Canadian uh, government for a study permit. And the um, government has declared its in intentions to impose a cap on international students for the forthcoming two years. And this new uh, policy will, of course, limit the approval of study permits to approximately uh, 360,000 in 2024. So it marks a significant reduction of 35% from, uh, from the figures recorded in 2023. So first of all, there will be a cap of 360,000 study permit approvals. And then uh, moving on, uh, we see that uh, there is a restriction announced on spousal open work permit. Um, uh, students are allowed to bring their spouses along with them uh, when they come for studies in Canada. And this option was open to all students, but now it has been restricted to only masters and doctoral students. Um, spousal open work permit will not be issued to students in other levels of studies. So if you're coming here uh, to study in a bachelor's program, you will not be allowed to bring your spouse with you. So you study, you, you go back if you're married and you're thinking that spouse comes with you, this option is no longer available to you for at least two years. Um, there is a, a another important uh, update about the postgraduate work permit eligibility. So most people, when they come to Canada for studies, their target is to become permanent resident. And to facilitate that, the Canadian government had introduced uh, postgraduate work permit. So if you graduate from a Canadian college or university, depending on the length of the program, you can get a postgraduate work permit. Uh, and then when you work on that postgraduate work permit for at least a year, you become eligible to apply for permanent residence uh, under Canada Experience Class. This has been now restricted to only master's uh, degree and uh, PhD uh, students. Uh, so you won't be able to get a postgraduate work permit. So if your target is to come to Canada, study, and then also work, and then apply for permanent residence, it may not be possible if you are not pursuing a master's or a doctoral degree. So this is an important uh, matter which you need to take into consideration if you're considering coming to Canada as a student and also has have plans to get a postgraduate work permit and then finally apply for permanent residence. Um, but having said that, uh, if you're a bachelor's uh, student, you may still qualify for immigration to Canada because if you do have work experience um, in uh, one of the uh, occupations uh, and before coming to Canada, uh, getting a Canadian degree actually adds 30 points to your, uh, uh, your point system. So you may actually still qualify if you have those points to your credit. It improves your comprehensive ranking score. So all is uh, all is not lost actually, but yeah, considering these policy updates is uh, very important. Uh, there is another requirement which actually can delay uh, your uh, study plans in Canada, which is uh, the requirement of you having a letter of attestation from a province, uh, the province where you wish to study. So provinces are now required to issue letters of attestation for accepted students. So consequence, uh, consequently, as I said, the intake of study permit application will pause, I think, until March 31st, allowing time for system updates. So uh, this is something that you need to take into consideration. If provinces work quickly, uh, and if you have, have uh, <coughs> secured, excuse me, uh, is postgraduate work permit, uh, oh, sorry, the study permit, and uh, if um, you happen to get the letter of attestation before March, uh, then you will be good to go. So this is important for all those prospective uh, students. 
Now, uh, coming to some more updates uh, on the Canadian immigration front. Uh, it's not all bad news, some good news is as well. Uh, one of the good news is that now PTA is going to be considered as one of the approved tests for all immigration pathways. PTE core is, has been approved. Uh, so if you are looking for immigration to Canada and or maybe you have already appeared in other tests like CELPIP or IELTS and your score was not uh, sufficient or it was not reflective of your actual language skills, uh, maybe PTE could be a, a test that you might want to um, take into account or consider, right? So this is uh, this is the good news. Uh, there have been a lot of questions that we receive for digital nomad visa, and IRCC recently on January the 30th uh, announced about um, or clarified the digital nomad visa requirements. Um, so first and foremost, uh, the digital nomads are those people who can perform their job remotely from anywhere in the world. Uh, so for you to come as a digital nomad, you only need to have a visitor status to relocate to Canada for up to six months at a time while you perform your job remotely. So it's very important. You can't do a job in Canada, but you may be able to do your job remotely or if you are uh, for a foreign employer, and if you are a self-employed person, you can uh, uh, provide services to your clients outside Canada while you're, you're staying in Canada. Um, a lot of people ask us, can they come on a digital nomad visa um, and can they then apply for work permit? So there are no restrictions, but you need to, of course, find a, an employer who offers you a job while you are here on a digital nomad visa. So if you are uh, here uh, on a digital nomad visa, and if you happen to find a job, you can always apply for the work permit. And your family members can also come along with you on digital nomad visa. Uh, but of course, they need to apply for their own uh, work permit or study permit. So it's not automatic. Your accompanying spouse needs to have a work permit as well. So that, that was a, a recent uh, clarification we received. Now, um, a lot of uh, people, they ask us, um, they are in the express entry pool and uh, they've been waiting for a nomination by a province and they have not received this, uh, received it as yet. Um, we understand that uh, the frustration because the focus is always um, uh, on younger applicants uh, in express entry while it is very efficient it often disadvantages applicants over a certain age uh, due to the points based evaluation but i think there are viable ways where you can uh, uh, you know qualify one of the ways could be a provincial army program of course um, provincial army program for example alberta Saskatchewan, Ontario, and Prince Edward Island uh, frequently see skilled workers to address labor market shortages. The only uh, problem is that these are still invitation-based systems. So if you are uh, registered with these provinces, you still have to uh, get an invitation from these provinces in order to qualify. Um, the provincial nomination, as you might already know, um, prioritizes applicants in uh, high demand sectors. Uh, but this is not the only thing. You also get additional 600 points, which uh, significantly offsets the points lost due to age factor. So Canada is aiming to welcome 484,000 permanent residents in 2024. And a considerable portion will be through PNP. Uh, underlining the program's significance. So if you uh, are losing points, PNP could be the way, but there is um, uh, another pathway that a lot of people um, overlook, which is the LMIA exempt work permits. And this is open for senior managers 
who are capable of investing in or establishing a business in Canada. So they may be able to explore the LMIA exempt work permit. Uh, so this option is basically tailored for individuals who can make a significant economic contribution requiring a financial commitment of say 200,000 Canadian dollars or more. A successful business operations for at least one year may pave the way for permanent residency why express entry because if you are if you have gained experience in Canada as the senior executive of your business you can actually claim 200 points for Canadian work experience so that boosts your ranking score so much so that you are then uh, eligible to apply for a permanent residence same is the case with the provincial business immigration pathways. Um, several Canadian provinces offer a business immigration program designed for individuals looking to invest, start, or purchase a business within the, uh, the provinces. Uh, these programs cater specifically to, I would say, old age professionals by focusing on economic contribution rather than age. Uh, so it provides a feasible route to permanent residency. Then we have the startup visa program as well, which fosters innovation in Canada. And it is actually ideal for senior managers with innovative business ideas. So gaining support from a designated business organization can lead directly to permanent residency or provide a work permit to begin implementing the idea in Canada. So this is a startup visa program. We've been very active in it. Uh, we have uh, been able to assist a number of professionals from all around the world in the startup visa program. Uh, the program emphasizes uh, the value of innovation and entrepreneurship and offers a unique opportunity for seasoned professionals to contribute to Canada's dynamic uh, economy. So uh, the question is Canadian immigration still possible for over age professionals? I would say it is still possible um, while the age factor in express entry presents a challenge. Uh, it is uh, clear that Canada offers multiple pathways. It's just a matter of you exploring those pathways and um, doing your due diligence and you will be good to go. Uh, I can see that there are a lot of comments coming in. So we'll try our best to answer those uh, in a short while. And there you have the question and answer. So let's uh, bring our team members to the stage and let's see what we can bring on table right here. Hello? Sorry, I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Yeah, now it's perfect. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so let's uh, right. scroll up and let's see if we have uh, some comments that we can bring on screen. Yes. Okay. Okay, so most of the comments that I'm seeing are, is how to join. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but yes. Okay, so very quickly. Uh, Monim is joining us from LinkedIn. Good morning. Thank you for joining us once again. And uh, Kasim, thank you. Kazil, thank you. Kashif Sattar, thank you. Shabazz, Walikum Salam. And uh, Sayyid M. Ismail Azam is joining us from uh, the US. Thank you very much for being with us today. And Sobia is here. Okay, this is this is the uh, question that I love most, and it says about visit visa, please guide. Okay, so if you want to visit Canada, it's no different from any other uh, country's visitor visa. You have to prove that you your intentions of coming to Canada uh, are not ambiguous. You are not looking to come and stay here permanently or start looking for jobs, um, visa officer is gonna refuse you. In my point of view, although I'm not the visa officer myself, but in my limited experience of 32 years, I have not seen people getting a Canadian visa on a fresh passport. So all these social media posts giving you wrong information about you coming to Canada on a visitor visa, 
employers are dying to uh, hire you because there are no people to do the job. Uh, come here and see how Canadians are struggling to find jobs. Everyone struggles. Yeah. It's, it's uh, true everywhere. You, anywhere in the world you go as a newcomer, even in your own country, if you relocate to another city, you will find it difficult, first of all, to find a job. Um, yeah. This notion of you getting a visitor visa is somehow a shortcut for you to come to Canada and uh, you will be all okay, you'll find a job, you will end up, first of all, you will not get a visa if you don't have the requirements met, like good travel history, very clear intention of coming here as a tourist and the officer believes in you that you will leave Canada at the end of the period authorized for your stay. But, but even if you get the visa, it doesn't serve the purpose that you might be having, right? So I'm not saying you have any intentions of working here, but I'm just touching base upon those questions that we receive all the time from people who have never traveled before. Mm -hmm. um, and they have somehow uh, come to conclusion that Canada is hiring, uh, Canadian employers are hiring people on visitor status. So be very careful and uh, make your uh, choice for the Fazil Tamar has 454 score in express entry profile and um, his NOC code is 31202 of his therapist. So congratulations on being in the pool, first of all. Uh, it is very good that you are there. And um, the only thing that you perhaps can do at the moment is wait until you get your invitation to apply for uh, the federal government or uh, get an invitation from a province. That is the best you can do, or you can look for jobs, but uh, realistically speaking, if you're working in a regulated occupation, the chances of you getting a job offer are next to impossible because you are unable to perform your your duties, right? Uh, I mean, you, you are unable to perform your occupation unless you have uh, licensing, and licensing is viable when you have permanent residence status. So be very careful when you uh, apply for jobs and someone asks you for money because there are a lot of con artists um, offering jobs and charging money which is illegal so be very careful sorry Jadun, thank you for joining us Hamza is asking has your webinar started I think we have started okay once again uh, the hashtag is Amir Ismail uh, Amir Ismail <laughs> Amir Ismail <laughs> Amir Smile, and mm -hmm. uh, that gives you access to today's draw and a free uh, consultation. Uh, let me just show you once again. This is the screen, and I think uh, we already have 15. Wow, 15 entries already. It's already, so we will conduct this draw. Uh, okay. Okay, so I have a question here from one of our viewers. Um, they're asking, what is the current CRS score and do you see it going down in the future? Right. So as uh, we uh, progress in 2024, most of the draws will be directed towards category-based um, selection criteria, right? Uh, most of these um, um, applicants who are being selected, let me just very quickly show you the screen. Uh, which is the category-based draws. Um, one of the category-based draw happened yesterday and it invited um, uh, French-speaking applicants. Okay, let me just show it to you, the screen. So rounds of invitation that has been happening. So you would notice here that there was this draw that happened and it invited 7,000 applicants from the express entry pool and the category was French language proficiency. So if you have good French language proficiency, you are in the luck because the past rank, look at the CRS score of lowest ranking candidate, was 365. So clearly the intention is to invite people uh, from uh, the category-based uh, selection criteria. And if we go back and see the previous rounds of invitations, you would see that 
before this French language, um, we had few general draws, but the score was hovering around 541, 543, 546 in the last three draws for general um, category. Uh, but if you look at the category-based draw, for example, agriculture and agri-food occupation, the score was 386. For transport occupation, it was 435. Trade was 425. Then again, general was 542. And that was in December. Uh, so if you look at the way things are going at the moment, if you have experience in one of the uh, occupation that has been identified by the Canadian government as uh, in demand, you are in luck, and that means that the ranking score would be lower. At the same time, as people keep on coming out of the uh, pool, there is a likelihood that the general draws uh, ranking score uh, will decrease. I don't have any hope about it because the general draw are basically inviting people who ha also have a nomination from a province because provincial nomination gets you um, 600 points. So if, some, if a draw happens at 540, it is impossible for you to get to that 540 without a provincial nomination. Right. It also means that you need to not only create your expressionary profile, but also register with various provinces with the hope that if your occupation is not in demand and has not been identified under category-based draws, uh, you might get lucky by way of a provincial nomination. And let me just very quickly show you the categories that have been chosen. Most people know about them. But uh, for the sake of uh, reference, let me just very quickly show you uh, that the categories that were chosen for 2023 on your screen, there were five categories, French language proficiency, healthcare occupations, STEM occupations, trade occupations, transport occupations, and agriculture and agri-food occupations. And this was for 2023. We don't know if they are going to update it, but most likely they're going to keep it like this. Um, they're going to pursue uh, category-based draws for STEM, and STEM occupations, uh, STEM professionals will get 30% more uh, preference over others. Uh, so, yeah, in fact, 30% of the draws will go to STEM occupations, but then there are health occupations as well and others as well. So that's how uh, it's going to be. Um, Kasim is saying already we registered new founder and leverage or webinar. So good luck with that. But you know that uh, I've seen a lot of videos about that just webinar happening and people making those videos and getting millions of views. Um, it's a webinar, of course. You should try your best to um, secure employment in Canada. But uh, in most of the cases, it uh, doesn't help anyone because uh, the sheer number of people. Uh, attending those webinars. So at best, they are uh, informational, basically. Okay, Farid Shahid has joined us from YouTube. Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in uh, Lahore, Farid. Okay, and uh, let's see if we have more questions coming in. Uh, can you scroll and uh, show it on the screen, Risha, please? I, I believe I don't have access to the questions that uh, okay. um, no worries yeah okay I, so, I didn't have a separate um, list of questions coming in if you'd like me to ask one of those yeah we can do that later let's uh, mm -hmm. access this so Usma is asking I uh, am um, okay let me just very quickly just get some issues right there. How do I focus myself? Oh, I cannot focus myself. <laughs> uh, not very technological savvy and getting old as well. Okay, so Uzma is saying she is in Dubai. She's a single mother and working in Dubai. Uh, she's 45. Can we suggest any pathway? So as we discussed earlier, for overage applicants, I'm not saying that you're old by any means, but from an immigration point of view, you're losing a lot of points in age factor. 
So it doesn't look that you may qualify in any of the skilled worker categories, but maybe the investor category or LMI exempt uh, C11 category might be your answer. Uh, if you're able to invest in a business in Canada, so do get in touch with us. In fact, our team is coming to Dubai as well on um, 9th of February, and we'll be there until 14th. So if you uh, can complete our assessment form on our website, we'll be able to review your eligibility and also make it you. Okay. Tariq is saying your team will deal with visit visa. Yes, we do represent a lot of visit visa, but we do not uh, accept applications where people don't have uh, substantial travel history or their plan uh, uh, to visit Canada are ambiguous. They don't really have any clear plan. So if you are someone who doesn't have any substantial travel history, we might not be able to assist you. But of course, you can always try other consultants or uh, apply on your own. Okay. Rabia is from Lahore and she's asking, she's single working in Lahore as um, an admin and HR officer. Her qualifications is MSC Economics and her age is 36 and she's interested. So anyone who's interested in coming to Canada, the first they need to figure out whether they are meeting the minimum requirement if they're qualifying or not. One way of doing that is by logging on to the Canadian government's official website, cic.gc.ca. If you need our assistance, if you want my team to make a, a free assessment for your eligibility, you can always complete our free assessment form on our website, amirishmail.com, and we'll be happy to make an assessment and advise you. Okay, and then we have another question coming in from Mahmoud Ahmed. He is a BBA, WS Educational Evaluation, three years degree. I'm assuming you're a well-informed client who has done his WES as well. Uh, if you have any specific question, please feel free to send a, an email to us and we'll be happy to respond. Duncan is asking, uh, he is a diploma holder in health records uh, and information officer, seven years experience, interesting to relocate to Canada. Through assessment, uh, I'm assuming you're saying that you wish to know whether you're qualifying or not. Um, most people uh, don't uh, get to uh, the sufficient point score unless they have a bachelor's degree, a three to four years bachelor's degree. But we can make an assessment with your diploma qualification. Please complete the assessment form and we'll be happy to assist. Okay, this one is asking a question that she has to apply for a visit visa for conference, which is going to uh, be happening uh, in February, okay, and uh, she has applied already, still no progress, but to do, uh, patience and wait, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you can send a, a reminder or a status request uh, and a request to expedite processing by way of using a web form on the Canadian government website. Other than that, there's literally nothing you can do about it. You have to wait for the decision. Okay. Okay. So Ali Raza is saying he's a professional actor in Pakistan who wants to move to Canada through his professional uh, his profession and lead to the need for it. So uh, for uh, people working in arts, culture, and if they are self-employed, they are into acting, they are into songwriting, or they are singers. And if they have uh, recognition in their home country or internationally, they can uh, qualify under the self-employed category. It is a category that was uh, made uh, several years ago. I believe there are no more uh, applications being accepted under this category because of the backlog. But uh, you can perhaps look into other self-employed categories like applying uh, as a someone who is willing to invest in Canada in a, in a business that is related to your work experience. So if you can come up with an idea about it and uh, you can discuss with our team about it and you have the investment uh, requirement uh, met, 
then you should be able to qualify in one of the categories. Okay, so let's do another question. So we'll go through these questions quickly because we need to do our uh, uh, giveaway as well. So let's see. I can show this giveaway. Hashtag is a made a smile. Uh, so if you enter, we'll see. Uh, let me just very quickly see. We have 22 entries already. So it's tough competition going on, right? Okay, so this, this question from Azam. He is a nurse. Which provinces are in demand for uh, nursing jobs? And what is the process of uh, PNP? So it's very simple. You need to create your express entry profile as a first step and then register yourself in various provinces. Almost all provinces have nursing requirement. Alberta, Saskatchewan, these provinces uh, regularly select nurses um, from the express entry pool. So you can register. And he has a, okay, so someone else. Mama Saad is asking, how much bank statement is required for immigration in? dollars. So someone applying as a single applicant, they need uh, somewhere around $13,000 to uh, demonstrate that they have sufficient financial capabilities to support themselves for the initial six months uh, of their uh, stay in Canada. And uh, it depends on the number of applicants. If you have dependents coming with you, the amount will increase by roughly $4,000. So you can add up and do it. Figure. Okay. Okay. So, Haritham is saying he has a, he holds a PhD and he possesses a close work permit as a postdoctoral fellow for a three-year term at UBC, below Lona, and he plans to relocate soon. Uh, potential pathways. So, look at your current eligibility. You might be qualifying already to create your express entry profile and be there for selection by provinces. Once you arrive here and you have gained experience, then a federal uh, pathway for Canada Experience Plus is open for you. Uh, and even the British Columbia PNP program for international students is also, uh, and, and those who have worked in uh, British Columbia is also open for you. So that might be something worth exploring. Uh, Mars Emma is asking, he, uh, he's a graduate chemical engineer and he's having seven years of professional experience. Which program suits him for immigration? Eight is 30 years. So make an assessment uh, on the Canadian government website, see uh, how many ranking points you have. And then uh, we'll, uh, uh, we can have a discussion as well, but first see where do you stand in terms of ranking score. Chemical engineers are usually not in demand I mean, they are not invited by provinces. I've not seen any chemical engineer getting a provincial nomination. But that's the, I think, the only way you can uh, get to Canada under skill worker category uh, if you get the nomination 600 points, because on the basis of only a bachelor's degree uh, will not get you to the required pass rank that is hovering around 500 or so. Okay. Asif Ali Sheikh is 46, civil engineer, Canadian immigration he's interested in. So as I said earlier, uh, if you are losing points, that many points in age factor, it becomes uh, rather impossible for you to uh, get an invitation under the Federal Skill Worker Program. You might be able to get a nomination from a province if you are in the pool, but to enter the pool, you do need 67 points. And if you are unable to get those, get to those 67 points, which is a major, uh, majority of points are depending on factors like uh, uh, age and language. So if you get to that 67 score, you are able to then enter the pool and then approach provinces. That would be the only way in my point of view. Otherwise, losing points in age factor uh, can cause you not qualify. Okay. Mujahad is asking, what's the maximum age limit according to areas and relevant programs? So there is no maximum or age limit as such. Um, 
but you do start losing points in age factor. For business program or LMIE exempt work permit for investors, age may not be a factor. But for skilled workers, age is a big factor and you start losing points from age 30. So if you are already say 40, 45, you have lost a lot of points and then you have to rely solely on a provincial nomination, which may or may not happen. So you have to, I mean, it's a cash 22 situation. If you go ahead, you don't know if you're gonna get it or not. If you don't go ahead, nothing is gonna happen, absolutely zero. So you have to, I think, go ahead and uh, take your chance, right? Okay, Islam Isam is asking, what is the difference between PNP with express entry and PNP without express entry? So when you apply for a provincial nomination, uh, many provinces are aligned with the federal government's express entry system. And those programs require you to have an express entry profile before you could register with those provincial programs. So those are express entry linked provincial programs. But there are some uh, provinces that offer provincial program without the need for you to create the express entry profile. Uh, programs such as Saskatchewan's Occupation in Demand program uh, is something people um, opt for if they are unable to create their express entry profile. Because as I said earlier, there is a requirement for you uh, to meet minimum requirements for you to meet in order to enter the pool. So say if you are losing significant points in A factor and you are not getting to 67 points allowing you to enter the express entry pool, but your occupation is in demand in Saskatchewan, so you can access that nominee program without the need of creating an express entry profile and get your immigration by way of provincial nomination. Okay, and then uh, Sayyid Ismail is asking, he has a quick question. Most of his friends in Pakistan are geologists. Is there any future for, uh, for the geologists in Canada? So if you look at the uh, occupations in demand in Canada, uh, I'm not sure if, um, Rija, could you quickly check if geologists are listed in STEM category? But uh, as I continue, um, there is no occupation list as such. So if someone is, who is scoring good ranking score, regardless of their occupation, they might still get invitation to apply. And uh, we need to actually explore whether geologists are in demand in uh, some provinces. So there could be a chance of, uh, uh, you know, uh, provincial nomination by these provinces. Let me just very quickly check if uh, STEM has geologists listed there or not. And then I will let you know. So yeah, they are not listed, but um, some of them are actually working as engineering managers. If they're in a management category, they might qualify under category based, but as I said, there's no occupation list. So uh, if they have sufficient ranking score, they may still qualify. Amir Jamali is saying, what are the chances of professionals going back to studies and getting a student visa? So no one can predict the chances of you getting a student visa. It is the decision of the visa officer. But all you can do is you can improve your um, chances of a study visa approval if you were to address all the concerns of the officer up front that you are a genuine student there is a need for you to study in canada you will come go back to your home country after you've completed your studies and um, there are sufficient financial economic and uh, family ties back home so if you get a student visa you may be able to then pursue your studies and depending on the level of studies you may be able to qualify for postgraduate work permit and also uh, PR under Canada Experience Plus. Okay, Zahid Hussain is asking how much minimum Canadian dollars required to start a business in Alberta and Minton? 
you should make up your mind for at least two hundred thousand Canadian dollars for any immigration program that you consider applying in, whether Alberta or um, Ontario or LMI exempt work permit or startup visa. This is a kind of uh, uh, financial commitment, or even more in some cases, depending on the business that you want to pursue. So, yeah, if you have any questions about business uh, migration programs, please feel free to get in touch with us and we'll be happy to respond. Okay, again, Abdul Rahman is saying um, if there are any prospects for teaching professions. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, there is no occupation list. If you have sufficient ranking score, even if you are a teacher, you may still qualify under the Federal Skill Worker Program to express entry. But uh, I don't see teachers getting uh, invitation unless they are early childhood uh, teachers uh, or uh, uh, educational counselors. So they may qualify. So look at your job description if that these fall under those kind of uh, Occupations, you may have better chances under category based draws. Usman is asking, as you will be in Karachi, what will be the best way to get a one on one consultation from me? Um, very simple procedure. We first make an assessment of your eligibility. It's a free assessment. You can go on our website, amirusman.com, and you can complete our assessment form. If you're found eligible, we can then suggest a slot. You can choose one from uh, our uh, booking uh, consultation page. But if you are not eligible, we would tell you in all honesty to not waste your time and money. And uh, we'll suggest you other pathways if you are qualifying in other areas, OK? Someone is asking if my brother is a Canadian PR and I'm applying for studies to Canada, is it advisable that he sponsor me with his bank statement? Um, no advice as such. I mean, it depends. If you don't have money and he has money, he can sponsor you. Uh, he can show his financial um, capability uh, to su support your studies in Canada. Uh, it can be anyone from your family uh, back home or himself so yeah uh, it doesn't improve your chances though uh, in any way or it doesn't impact it any way in any way the officer will still look at your overall goal of studies in Canada whether they are aligning with your uh, future plans uh, you have financial means to, uh, to look for and you will leave Canada at the end of the uh, study period Mahmoud Hamid is saying, what are the prospects of corporate sales manager? Good prospects, sales people are always in demand everywhere in the world. But uh, in terms of immigration, they can qualify under the Federal Ski Worker Program because there's no occupation list as such. But uh, I've seen sales people and marketing people being selected by Ontario under the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program. So you might want to explore that. Are saying thank you very much for the appreciation. Faha is also registered. Let me just very quickly check what is going on. 25 entries. So um, let's uh, announce our trip dates now. And uh, um, anyone of you who, who is interested in meeting with our Toronto team in Dubai or in Pakistan, in Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad, these are the three cities we have chosen for timing. We might go to some other cities. Like the last time we went to uh, Multan. So we might uh, go to other cities as well, but for the time being, the schedule is uh, for uh, uh, these three cities. Uh, let me just very quickly show you uh, the uh, dates. Okay. So, first off, uh, uh, Dubai, that will be our first stop, 9th February to 14th February. So hopefully uh, we'll be seeing many of you in Dubai one-on-one -on -one at our Dubai office. We will be then in Karachi from 15th Feb to 22nd Feb. And uh, we have an office in Karachi since late 90s. I maintain it on Shariah Faisal. And I meet with my clients at that office. 
So hopefully I'll see you many of you in Karachi in, uh, at my office. Then we'll be in Islamabad for three days, 23rd Feb to 26th Feb. We will also be going to Lahore, 27th Feb to 29th Feb. These dates might uh, change a little bit, adjusting to the uh, number of inquiries we receive, because uh, in Karachi especially, we receive a lot of inquiries, so we sometimes have to extend our dates in Karachi. But for the time being, this is what we are sticking to. So the process to arrange a consultation uh, is very simple. You can complete our assessment form on our website, underisman.com, to book the slot. We have very limited slots available, so make sure that you book them in advance. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can take a few more questions before we... Uh, start our draw for free, free consultation. Okay. There's a question from Junaid. He's asking, should he do IELTS before attending live interactive session in Lahore, which is better choice. I have 16 years of education and he's 39 years of age. Complete our assessment form. That is the way forward. Um, you will only be able to see people whom we have assessed as qualifying because there'll be no point in uh, you coming all the way to see us for us to tell you that you don't qualify, right? So complete the assessment form and we'll let you know whether you are meeting the criteria or not. Okay. Azim is saying he's a software engineer, good to know that, Azim. Uh, you are in demand, by the way. Okay, I've already answered uh, Zahid Kamran saying good information thank you very much Ahmad is saying so then will be SINP draw okay we don't know about it because this is something the province takes the initiative engineer Mosin is saying that he's 37 he has done his WBS he's got four years bachelor's degree and 11 years of experience so most of you might have already known that your chances of being selected, uh, they are depending on only a provincial nomination. And that might not have happened because uh, I'm pretty sure that you have created your express entry profile. If it is not happening through express entry profile, I would suggest that you look into the other areas like LMIE exam uh, work permit. Uh, if you have the financial capacity to start a business relevant to your line of uh, work. So if you want to discuss about that, please feel free to approach my team and we'll be happy to uh, work out something for you. Emil Usman has uh, MPhil, IELTS uh, 6.5 and WES. So I'm pretty sure that you already know you don't qualify, right? Because you have 5.5 in one of the components of IELTS. Uh, try PTE if you're struggling with the uh, IELTS or maybe self it because self it is also available in Pakistan. Shazib Hader is saying uh, he is MS management working in government organization as an admin officer. Please complete our assessment form and let you know if you do business days, whether you're qualifying or not. Shazir, uh, Dunail has an answer, uh, question. Uh, in provincial nomination, are we restricted to work only in that province? If yes, then for how much time in that province? Yeah, you're not restricted to work in uh, the province that nominated you, although the province would like you to stay back and uh, contribute to the economy of that province. And you should actually, because it, it looks um, good for you too, because morally, they uh, pave way for your PR by getting you 600 points. But legally speaking, uh, you, uh, if you move to another province, there are no implications unless there is a law introduced in sometimes in future, which might preclude you from moving to another province for a certain period of time. This is something that happens in Australia though, uh, where you are restricted to a certain state that nominated you for a certain period of time, but not uh, as such in Canada for the time being. 
Okay. Sorry, try saying some provinces are now carrying out draws after a period of two months vis a vis fortnight earlier. Is that due to some high backlog or any other reason? Yeah, backlog has to do something with that. And uh, they are basically uh, allocated a quota and uh, they utilize their quota according to their allocation. Um, they can't uh, invite people, uh, all the people in the pool, of course, and they also need to look at their processing capacity. So they do those draws according to uh, the backlog they have. Okay, Akhtar is from Sahiwal, age 31, BSC Honors, Agriculture, 6 year agriculture marketing experience. I also want to get kindly guide. Please complete our assessment form. We let you know very, very quickly in two business days whether you're qualifying or not. Kaila Gold is saying, My brother is coming in Canada as student visa for doing MBA. For him, how student visa convert to, how can student visa be converted into PR? How much? time it will take so he needs to do his mba he can then get a three years postgraduate work permit once he has uh, worked in canada for at least one year in that uh, uh, on that work permit he can then perhaps qualify under canada experience class so yeah first he needs to complete his mba then uh, find a job on a postgraduate work permit work for one year and then he can qualify Okay, so some people are asking about uh, when will SINP draw happen. Uh, we don't know about it because that is a decision uh, the province will take. Uh, once again, all those questions about the eligibility, they can be determined if they complete our assessment form and my team will be happy. Uh, same is the case with Zuhair. He is also asking about uh, his eligibility, where please feel free to complete our session form. We'll be happy to assist you. Mujahid is saying, unfortunately, suddenly electrical failure has happened due to heavy rain in Karachi. You might be lost to connection anytime. Okay, so that's unfortunate, but that's what happens even here in Canada when we have a snowstorm. Right, Bridget? Happens all the time. Happens all the time, yeah. So I had to send a skin and it's 100,000 can be sufficient to start a business in Canada. Well, no money is actually sufficient in Canada. You have to have a lot of money. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, there could be a possibility. We can figure out a, a business option for you. Uh, but we need to make an assessment. So feel free to get in touch with us. We'll be happy to. There is a business assessment form on our website as well. So we'll be happy. Asadullah is also asking about his eligibility. Uh, so how much in actual my work experience would be when registering myself for Express Entry Profile? Yeah, a technical question I would have been able to answer if I had your uh, CV in front of me. You can do so by completing my assessment form, I upload your CV, and we'll be happy to respond, okay? Tesla is saying, a brother runs his own real estate business in Pakistan. He and his family wants to immigrate to Canada. He has refused U.S. visa twice. So we will first see whether he is qualifying in one of the available categories. If he is a businessman, he might qualify under the business category it can be startup, it can be provincial business program, uh, it can be LMIA exempt uh, uh, work permit for business owners. So we can discuss that. We have a business assessment form on our website, amirishman.com. You can have him complete it and we'll be able to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with him. Uh, it can be in person while we are visiting Pakistan or it can be online via Zoom. Okay. Zuhair Hussain is asking about his eligibility. So he's an MBA, supply chain management, and engineering degree in electronics with 13 years of experience, oil and gas, age 36. How can I immigrate to Canada with my family? Once again, the eligibility needs to be checked. You can check your eligibility on the official website of the Canadian government. It is cic.gc.ca. 
or if you want my team to make an assessment, please complete my assessment form. I'll be happy to make an accurate assessment and advise you <coughs> whether you qualify or not. Jazib has joined us from uh, LinkedIn and he's asking the question. He has 470 ranking score. What are my chances? So difficult to say whether the score is going to be reduced to 470. All you need to do is to be in the pool because you never know. The next drop would be 470. Who knows? But if you're not in the pool in first place, then uh, you would not stand any chances. 470 used to be a very, very good score. Uh, sometimes in past, but now it seems that the focus is mostly on category-based draws, French-speaking people, or STEM, or trade, or uh, transportation, or health. So if your occupation is not in demand, all you can do is to base uh, your hopes on PNP or uh, reduction of ranking score in future express entry draws. Guru Karima, thank you very much for joining. Okay. Mohsen is saying, what are the chances of electrical engineer? And the chances are good for electrical engineer um, because of three reasons. One is that they may be able to get a selection under the Federal Skill Worker Program Express Entry Draws. They may be able to get selection under category-based draws because their occupation falls under the STEM category. And they may be able to get an invitation from a province. And many provinces do select electrical engineers in India, Alberta, Ontario, and many other provinces. So the chances are good. You, I would recommend that you go ahead and create your express entry profile and you will be good to go. Okay, let's see. There are lots of questions and we are running out of time. So let's see if uh, we can we can see uh, and choose some of other okay, uh, questions. Nutrition, yes, nutritionists are in demand. They are under the category-based health professional category. So, yeah, they are in demand, very much in demand. Okay. As Devi is saying, 52 years of age, 20 years of teaching experience with just in the Saskatchewan. Uh, the chances are very slim. You are losing a lot of points in age factor. I would be careful if I was to proceed and create a profile because, first of all, you won't be able to create the profile because of those points. And if, even if you do uh, succeed, your chances would be very slim. Okay, let's see if I can scroll down. Or a few more. Okay, so uh, for all those who are asking about their eligibility, please uh, visit our website and complete an assessment form. It is easier for us to make an assessment for your eligibility and then uh, conduct a consultation. So Nadia Kashyap is asking, oh, by the way, thank you for joining us, Nadia. I hope you're doing well in Canada. Uh, okay. So you have a brother in Pakistan, and he has, if he has LMIA from an employee in Canada, what are the prospects for him to get visa? How speedy is the process? I know Pakistan session is needed. Session is needed. However, I would appreciate the response. So if you're talking about um, someone who has received an LMIA, the work permit process doesn't take long, actually. Uh, it should not be more than three months for the officer to render a decision. So if he has already secured an LMIA, a positive LMIA, then uh, you can enter Canada very, very soon. Uh, any uh, questions, you may feel free to call me. You have my number. So please. Kanuz is asking, please share the path to Canada right after MBBS. So right after MBBS, um, you need to have at least one year of full-time paid and continuous work experience in order to meet the minimum requirements for work experience. Now, for doctors, they uh, go through a, a house job period, which is also counted towards their experience because that meets the requirement of work experience. It is paid full time and it is, it basically, in most of the cases, exceeds the minimum uh, number of hours required um, 
to meet the minimum of what uh, working hours required for, for express entry, which is 35 hours, but uh, people doing, or doctors doing our job, they usually work longer, right? Okay. Special is also asking about his eligibility. Please uh, complete our assessment form and we will be happy to assist you. So is the case with Sir Hale, who is a lawyer. Heather Buzz also asking about his eligibility, a senior manager. Uh, so, Heather, I think you might want to look into the investment possibilities because with 43 years of age, um, it becomes difficult for someone to meet the ranking score requirements. So I think if you want to explore other pathways as we discussed today, we'd be happy to assess and also look at your financial capacity to see whether you will be able to meet the requirement or not. Okay. Uh, Zirak is also asking about his eligibility. Please complete my assessment form. I'll be happy to, to assist. And Abdul Rahman has joined us from YouTube and he is he has a master's in telecommunication and profile is masters of telecom and access score is good but only uh, issue I think is reading 6.5 age is 32 any chance in PNP yeah there are good chances no one can predict your chances actually you have to be available for selection so take your chances so you lose 100% of your shots that you don't take, right? So take your shot and you will perhaps be successful, inshallah. So our assessment form completed. This is what Usman is saying. I, I am eligible. What's the way forward now? Should I visit the Karachi office? Um, if you have completed the assessment form and if you have received the response, you might want to read the response in its entirety. When I respond to applicants, and if they are eligible, I provide them detailed, comprehensive assessment, and I also categorically advise them what to do next, next and how to book a consultation with me. I would not suggest you that you visit local agents, even my local office, because um, you would be dealing with local staff. If I am visiting Karachi, you are very welcome to visit Karachi. And I'm there, so you'll be able to meet with me and get the counseling directly from me. But if you're going to just walk into my office in Karachi and discuss your prospects with local people or even local so-called other agents, you will not get the right advice. You need the right advice. And I'm very accessible. The response that I gave you has everything written on it. So please follow those steps. If you are interested or maybe have decided to bring me on board as your representative, right? So that would be wonderful. Do that and we'll be happy to assist you. Okay, so we are coming to the end of the questions. Uh, Nadia, you're very welcome. Uh, Hamza is uh, doing remote job for US company as SEO. <clears throat> does SEO come under STEM? SEO is a digital marketing. So it doesn't come under the STEM category, but uh, you may still qualify under other uh, pathways. Again, Mukas is asking, he's 37, and uh, he's a telecom engineer. What are the chances? So I think uh, you would still qualify under the STEM category. <clears throat> I've been speaking continuously, so losing my voice there. <coughs> Junaid is asking, is PTE exam eligible for skill-based immigration category? Yes, very much, according to the new announcement. Uh, they actually had announced it last year that PTE is being considered, but now they have uh, indicated now from this year it will be accepted. Thank you for the appreciation, Kanoz, and I hope to seeing you in Islamabad during my next trip. Okay. Perfect. So, yes, you know, Usman, I'll be there for a very limited period of time. There are slots available on my booking consultation page. 
if you're going to wait until the 11th hour and don't book your cons uh, consultation in advance, then you might not be able to do it. You would still be able to uh, book a consultation online, though, because it's not necessary, perhaps, for you to come all the way to Karachi office. You can do the choose the online version uh, option. But if you want to come over to Karachi office, we have a consultation booking page for Lahore, Karachi, and Islam. But you can, you can choose that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we are uh, going to conduct our uh, giveaway now. And let's see who wins today and whosoever wins if they are based in Dubai, Lahore, Karachi, or Islamabad, we'll meet with them in person. But if they are somewhere else, we will then meet with them online. Okay. So let's uh, see how many uh, people have entered in the draw. And uh, the giveaway is very simple. You enter hashtag Amir Smile in comments and you will be entered. So let's see how many are there. Okay. So we have 28 entries. I'm going to give you guys one more minute. So you could be entered into this uh, giveaway. Last chance. <laughs> yeah. Last chance. So we have... Uh, few more people. yeah it always happens during my webinars people wait until the last minute and then <laughs> it's it's fun basically um and gives a one of the lucky person to uh, have this consultation fee waived by the way the consultation is actually waived in any case because it is credited to the client who retains our services subsequently after the one-on-one -on -one consultation. So even if you're paid, you know there's going to be credited back to you when you retain our services. But uh, this one will be totally free, of course. <clears throat> All right. Parit Shahid uh, has put in uh, I'm this one many times. So, yeah, it's not going to increase your chances of uh, winning Parit. Okay. Yeah, I love you too, Akhtar. Thank you for your love. Okay. Yeah, Devi, this should be with the hashtag Amir Smile. Uh, this one. We are going so fast, I can't. Uh, so it should be hashtag Amir Smile rather than just Amir Smile. Okay. <coughs> Okay, and let's go, guys. Choose me. So I'm not gonna choose you. It's gonna be choose uh, me. <laughs> okay, the wait is over. Let's do the draw. Let's, let's see who the lucky winner is. Okay, let's do it. Okay, we have, uh, I don't know, we have 35 entries. I see a lot of people uh, entering hashtag community response. Still shows only 35. Maybe it's not updated, but uh, it's okay. Maybe some people are entering twice, right? Okay, let me just start the draw now. Kanuz Ashraf uh, is the one chosen. I don't know. I had that feeling, Kanuz, uh, because oh, the last time we Islamabad, we couldn't see you. And see, the system has selected you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Guys, what do you say? Should we conduct? <laughs> yeah, she's saying I'm so lucky. Yeah, that's wonderful. And she says she won earlier as well. <laughs> what is going on? Wow, she got lucky twice. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's do it one more time. Okay. okay. Let's do it one more time uh, so we can have another. So I, I don't do it, but this time around, there are so many people attending uh, the live. It's actually um, what I see is 
the webinar page only, but there are other people watching on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and our, one of our Facebook pages as well. I couldn't go wow. live on uh, uh, Instagram though because it, it got stuck somehow. So uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but let's see. Uh, let's see. Draw again. It says. Okay, I hope it doesn't lose <laughs> lose again. Ooh. Rabia Hayat as uh, Rabia Hayat. Congrats, Rabia. Okay, Rabia, what you need to do is you need to get in touch with our team. Just send us an email at info at amirismile.com and our team is going to uh, coordinate your free consultation with us. If you are in Lahore, Islamabad, or Karachi, we'll be able to see you in person. But if you are not in those cities or in Dubai, but if you are not in those cities, then uh, we can meet with you online in, Zoom in coming weeks, okay? So get in touch with us and wonderful to have all of you uh, with us today. Uh, please feel free to send in your questions. I apologize if you have not been able to answer any questions. Uh, very quickly before we go away, uh, I think we are already into how much uh, time? We, one hour and 17 minutes. This is the longest broadcast we've ever had. Um, if you have any um, questions, if you have any questions, if you have questions, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, or if you have any questions, so we can cover these uh, questions that we receive directly before the webinar so we can answer those. Uh, do you have any questions, uh, Zoya? जी बिल्कुल एक क्वेश्चन आया हुआ है जब हमारे पास अपॉन अराइवल इन कनाडा हाउ एंड व्हेन कैन आई एक्सपेक्ट टू रिसीव माय परमानेंट रेजिडेंट कार्ड आई लाइक टू इंक्वायर अबाउट द प्रोसेस एंड टाइमलाइन फॉर रिसीविंग द परमानेंट रेजिडेंट कार्ड अपॉन अराइवल इन कनाडा या सो व्हेन यू अराइव इन कनाडा यू डोंट हैव टू अप्लाई फॉर पीआर कार्ड यू आर इशूड पीआर कार्ड ऑटोमेटिकली बेस्ड ऑन द डेटा यू ऑलरेडी प्रोवाइडेड एंड यू हैव टू प्रोवाइड देम एन एड्रेस इन कनाडा Uh, some people, some of our clients provide our uh, Toronto office address and that is delivered if they don't have an address as yet. Some of them uh, provide their friends or relatives address. So that card is then delivered to your address in Canada. The processing time varies. Uh, you can go onto the Killing Commons website. There are uh, there's a section for processing time. I think it's usually somewhere around uh, 40 to 50 days. Yeah. Uh, if there are no issues like photos, Um, new photos are not needed, everything is in order, you should receive your first PR card very, very quickly. Any other questions, please? Um, before we let you go, Mr. Smile, we would like to, um, we would like for you to elaborate more on the um, C11 um, LMIA work uh, permits, work exempt permits, uh, anything you could add to that for our viewers? Yeah, so due to the lack of time i might not be able to get into it in detail but uh, any any work permit if you want to work in canada you need an lmia but there are some categories for work permit which are exempt from uh, the requirement of lmia these are for lmi exempt categories c11 and c10 is the code used for those exemptions c11 specifically means that the person is uh, uh, a self-employed or a business owner who wishes to establish his business in Canada and on the basis of the significant benefits he's going to bring to Canada, like uh, creating jobs in Canada, uh, introducing new technology, furthering any uh, industry, improving the lives of Canadians. So significant benefits have uh, a very broad meaning. So if the visa officer finds that your proposed endeavor uh, is going to bring uh, significant benefits to Canada. They would allow you to come and work in Canada on a work permit and exempt you from securing an LMIA, which means you can work for your own company as the employee of the company. And then, as I told you earlier, that it may pay way to your PR right. because you can claim points, 200 points potentially um, mm -hmm. to uh, qualify under express entry. You get 200 points if you have uh, experience as a senior manager. So 
but most importantly, when you come over here as an owner of the business, you have to switch your role to a senior manager and employ yourself as the as the senior manager of your own company. So then you can claim points. So that the strategy is, seems to be a bit complex and it uh, requires meticulous planning. Um, but yes, we can assist you with every step of the way. Uh, this could include registering your business or securing a, a, an existing business, okay, you can purchase an existing business, or you can even go with a uh, franchise option. So there are several options. All of these require a strategy consultation. I have a book, a consultation link on my website. If you are someone who's interested in discussing those options, please use the link and we'll be happy to assist you with that, okay? So everyone, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Rija and Andre. Thank you guys for watching. Exactly. And we are looking forward to Thank seeing everyone. you in Dubai, Lahore, and Islamabad. And uh, yes. uh, we we'll leave you with uh, to our your consultations. Yeah, looking forward, very excited actually to be uh, to be visiting uh, Lahore, Islamabad, and Karachi and uh, Dubai. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. And we'll see you. Again. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye.